So here we go, we have a, an empty Visual Studio project and we're going to uh, create an application in here, we're going to embed Lua and we're going to run some Lua code. So CMake made for me a uh, Lua tutorial, that's just my executable with my main CPP that's completely empty, and Lua lib which is just the Lua source files which can actually just be compiled into a library on their own. There we go. So if I build Lua tutorial at the moment, uh, it's going to complain because I don't have a main function. So I'm going to put a main function in. And what do we get? There we go. We have successfully made an application that does absolutely nothing, but it's a starting point. But we have compiled and linked Lua in. So um, uh, it's traditional to print hello world here so let's just make sure that we are actually running this code uh, let's print let's see if this works there we go so our main uh, our main function is actually running and now we can actually start um, actually putting some blue in. So because this is currently just a C program but we are compiling in C++, uh, I actually need to just include lua.hpp which is the C++ include. If you're just using C I think you just do lua h um, and the only reason for that is because it just sticks extern C around it so that the compiler knows not to mangle the names. So make sure if you're compiling in C++, most people will be nowadays I think, um, use that and not the H1 or you'll get some funny errors probably. Um, and then we should be able to uh, execute a Lua script. So the first thing you've got to do for Lua is you need to make a Lua state. Um, and for some reason in Lua it's traditional to call your Lua state L. And I'm going to do that with a function called Lua L new state which is very nicely named. So that is going to create my new Lua state. And you'll notice that um, for those of you who may be used to writing your own C or C++ programs, I didn't tell it how to allocate the memory for this. So Lua's made me a Lua state. It's given me back a pointer. But it hasn't actually, I didn't actually tell it how to allocate that memory. So if you've got your own memory allocator, you actually need to do something called, you just need to do Lua new state. And that passes an allocation function which is listed in the library so if if you want to um, if you need to if you've got your own fancy memory allocator or something like that or you're you want to know how Lua is allocating the memory for this state then you need to use that function instead uh, there's an example in the library that, that's just a couple of lines of code that tells you how to implement a really simple allocator and deallocator but essentially if you're not bothered you just want to get something running then this function will just do its own like Lua specified allocation. It's probably malloc or something. And it will create your Lua state. So once we've done that, uh, now we can actually execute some Lua code. And I'm going to do that with something called do string. Uh, there we go. So this takes the Lua state and takes a string. And the string is just some arbitrary Lua code that I want to execute. So I'll just set x to 42 and so there we go. So in uh, in not many lines of code I've actually I've, I've included Lua, I've created a new Lua state, I've executed some Lua code and then if my function is going to going to terminate, which it will do here, I need to clean up that state that we allocated, because remember Lua allocated some memory for this, so if I don't if I don't uh, close that, it's it's not going to deallocate. And keep in mind again that if you had got your allocation function, you need to, it would go through the same allocation function to uh, deallocate. So that is not many lines of code to create a Lua script, and that's one of the things people love about this language, is that embedding it and actually running it uh, is just so simple. Like I've got three lines of code there and technically I didn't really need that one because if I ended the program I wasn't really going to leak memory anyway. So 
Um, let's just see if it actually runs. The unfortunate thing is, you're not going to see anything at all because um, this really has no output. It's it, we, we think it's executed this low script and it did set x to 42 and then it just deleted it. So how can we actually see the output of that? Well, this x, if you know anything about the scripting language, this is actually a global. Um, and it, everything's a global in Lua unless you specify local first. So x is a global in that Lua state. So I can get a global from Lua. So again, it wants the Lua state and it wants the name of that global, which is x. Now, this is the point where it's kind of chicken and egg because uh, if you don't know anything about Lua, Lua is all interfaced with via C with a stack. So at this point, I've just used the stack, but I haven't told you how it works yet. So get global is going to pull that X uh, and it's going to push it onto the Lua stack at the top of the Lua stack. So as you can see, it's kind of like this function didn't really return me the the global. It just it just seems to have done nothing. And this can be the most confusing thing. Uh, if you've seen Lua C code for the first time, it's like, what the hell? Why the hell isn't this the usual, like, I call a function and I get a value back? But it's because a lot of it's the stack, so you kind of have to read the code and like kind of visualize in your mind what the stack's doing. So I've basically what that's done is pushed the value of x onto the stack, the Lua stack, and then I can use a function called toNumber um, to get it off the stack. And now this is this is also a thing. I'm gonna I'm just gonna pass this magic value of one in here. This thing does actually return a value. It's gonna return a Lua number, and that's gonna be my x. So I created the state. I set x to 42 uh, in a Lua script. I got the global value of x and I pushed it onto the stack at the top, and then I took the value at the top of the stack. So so in Lua, 1 is the top of the stack. I'll explain it a, late, a bit better later on. But for now, you're just going to trust me that this is the position on the stack that I want to access. And I returned that as a number. Now, at the moment, I know it's a number because I can see the script, but so it's a bit of cheating, but it might not be. But in this case, I know it. So uh, I'm going to let it slide. And then I can say... Lua says x is this, and I'm just going to cast it to an int. It's, it's probably a 64-bit number, but um, we'll see what that does. So let's just build and run that. Uh, oh, I didn't put my new line on, but Lua says x is 42. Let's make this nice and tidy, shall we? There we go. Oh, well, that's wrong. That's totally wrong. Actually, Lua executed that quite nicely. There you go. Lua says x is 42. Let's just make sure that's not... We're not going insane. Let's just change it to 47. And there you go. So that's it. That's, that's us executing that script, pulling some values out. We push them onto the stack, uh, and then we, um, we got that value back, and we printed it. So we successfully took a value from Lua and we got it back into C. So in the next video, I'll probably just explain the stack a bit better and also go through these types because Lua doesn't have many types and that's one of its strengths really. So once you know what all the types are and what they, what they do and you know about the stack, the rest of the API starts to become a lot easier. So we'll do that next time.